if you're hearing us, give us a little, little comment in the comment section, or if you can hear us live, give us a woot woot. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, excited to be here. If you are new this morning, we want to welcome you. And you can just write your name in the comment section. And we as a church community want to welcome you. And just want to let you know we've got people actually gathering here for the first time. I don't know how long. And uh, whether you're online, whether you're here uh, in our actual building, just know that we are a church community. And uh, whether you're here, there, or anywhere, you matter and you're important and you're still part of our church. So super excited. Uh, Chris, uh, I know you're not a father. That's correct. Correct. Yeah. correct? Okay. Not, not a father. You're not a father, but we did have Father's Day last week. And I would love to know, love to know. I think the world's itching to know. What did you do? Yeah, uh, well, considering I'm not a father, I, and uh, my father lives in Saskatchewan, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so we didn't get to spend Father's Day together this this year, which was which was too bad. But uh, I, I don't know uh, if I have any major Father's Day memories. I mean, mm-hmm. like you said, I'm not a father, but uh, but it's always awesome just to spend time uh, with the family, eating a good meal, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. So there you go. But uh, but how about you, Trevor? Trevor, you are a father. Yep. Uh, you have two kids. I have three, but we don't talk about the third. Oh, I'm just kidding. No, two <laughs> kids. All right. And, All right. Uh, what did we do? Uh, I asked for two things, two very specific things. Yep. And the first was I've been uh, noticing ads for deep dish Little Caesars pizza, and I've just been wanting to try it. Uh, I had the opportunity to eat like anywhere, and I chose Little Caesars. So uh, we're also plugging them, and we're <laughs> getting paid uh, yeah. to do that. No, uh, and we did that, and then uh, Rock Dairy Queen, and then went into a food coma, and that was my day. So it was good. And uh, for you tuning in online, we would love to hear your Father's Day memories. Maybe this was last weekend. Maybe this is some awesome thing that you've done in years prior. But uh, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, so write that in the comment section and give us a little update on what your Father's Day memories are. Sound good? Yeah, that's awesome. So Trevor, what you're telling me is you could have eaten anywhere. Yep. You could have eaten steak. Yep. You could have eaten maybe lobster. What else? What uh, like what else? What else would you guys pick over Little Caesars? Anything. You could have had anything. You know, guys, I'm not claiming to be a hero. Okay. <laughs> Just had a I had an itch <laughs> and I uh, went for it. All right. <laughs> All um, right. Hey, uh, last week Trevor yep. um, Brad was preaching through uh, the story of Joseph mm-hmm. and finishing that off and mm-hmm. and and uh, I hope. For you guys at home, that that was just an impactful sermon that uh, throughout this week, um, yeah, it was just helping to guide you through the week. And Brad asked us a couple questions, and he asked us, um, "Are are we uh, reactors or responders?" And, and I've just been thinking about that uh, here this morning. And so as we head into uh, this week, mm-hmm. uh, I just wanted to give us a reminder. I'd just be thinking about that, or uh, as we look at the story of Joseph, which is, you know, cool because it's one of the only. S- stories in the Old Testament where, like, he doesn't complete, somebody doesn't completely blow it, which is re- really cool, and Joseph's actually somebody who we can kind of look up to in a, in a way, and, and so, uh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. way to go, Joseph. Way, way to go, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> actually get it together for once. No, it's a good reminder, and uh, for anybody that's looking to get uh, further connected into our church community, a few things coming up. Uh, with MTC Kids, we're going to be resuming children's ministry on Sundays starting August 9th. And uh, we'll send out some more information about that. Uh, we've got take home uh, uh, acti- no, not take home. We've got activities you can come and do in the service. So if you register in weeks to come, we've got coloring pages, activity books that are on their way. And so we want to make it a great space still. And we're going to be starting our virtual VBS uh, and dropping those videos starting July 8th. And so pretty stoked, excited about that. Chris, what's coming down the pipeline for you? Yeah, guys, uh, on Friday we had our senior high wrap-up movie night here, and tonight we have our uh, junior high wrap-up here at the church. It's a movie night, so you can come and bring a blanket. Uh, Obviously, we've got the spaces marked off so that uh, we can... We can be socially distant, uh, movie night. And so bring your own snack. We can't serve food, but uh, that means you get to bring whatever you want and make everybody jealous of your awesome snack. So that's at 6 o'clock. So bring your own snack, bring your blanket or pillow to sit on, and also bring your stuffy because there's going to be a prize for the best stuffy. It's going to be awesome. 
Sounds awesome. Well, I think we're getting close to our service starting. Uh, I think let's move into our rapid fire round. That's right. That's um, right. I think do, we, do we have a guest? I think we do have a guest. Do we have a guest? Holly, are you still feeling it? Okay. Well, guys, All let's right. welcome Holly up. She is going to rock our rapid fire. We are going to give you a series of questions, and all you have to do is answer the first thing that comes to your mind, okay? Uh, and these are, these are deep. We've got American history. We've got, no, it's super easy. Uh, we've got questions about ice cream, questions that involve Spanish, and all sorts of things. So are you ready? First, would you just let us know, what is your name? Holly. Holly, welcome, and thank you for being here. Okay, let's start. This is our rapid fire round, and the stakes are high. Are you ready? Let's go. Favorite ice cream flavor, Holly? Chocolate. Chocolate, beautiful. Can you say a word in Spanish? Amigos. Woo! Uh, favorite number? 10. Oh, that's perfect. Who has it easier, men or women? <laughs> mm, you could take a pass. Yeah, it's women though. Uh, I'm just kidding. No, it's, it's men, it's men, it's men, it's men. Have you ever worn socks with sandals? Yes. Yes, good, good. Uh, what about a fanny pack? No. Also good. Uh, name a primate besides monkeys and apes. I don't think that exists. Uh, why can't we tickle ourselves? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't review these questions at all. Uh, what does a person need? Uh, nope, not going to ask that one. Um, what's the best age? Nine. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, is double dipping at a party ever acceptable? Double dipping being if you take a chip. It's a great Seinfeld episode that explains this. If you take a chip and you take a bite. No, if you take a chip and you dip your chip and then you come back and take a bite, can you re-dip that chip in the bowl? No, okay, that's good. And one for the road, would you rather go on an amazing long bike ride or have an amazing swim at the beach? Bike ride. Bike ride, you're a bike rider. Awesome, well Holly, air high five. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here and for coming up and just for answering some questions. All right, Chris, I think we've got one minute. Do you wanna do one more rapid fire round? We've got, oh, uh, right, we got one more minute here? Okay, Trevor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do you this time. Okay, okay. All right, New York Minute coming up as fast as you can. Yeah, no here, problem. Here we go. Okay. Texting or talking? Texting. <laughs> Favorite, <laughs> talking. Uh, talking. <laughs> Favorite day of the week? Uh, Wednesday. Okay, great, wow. It's not true, it's not uh, true. Favorite city in the U.S. besides the one you live in, which you don't? Uh, California is not a city. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, nickname your parents used to call you? Uh, eight Ball. Okay, we won't ask any questions. <laughs> uh, last song you downloaded? Oh man, what are we, in 1995? <laughs> I just stream it. Uh, would you rather be able to speak every language in the world or be able to talk to animals? I uh, speak every language in the world. All right, all right. Favorite holiday? Christmas. How long does it take you to get ready? Uh, 10 seconds. <laughs> Scale of <laughs> one to 10, how good of a driver are you? Uh, I'll give myself a solid three on some days and it's upwards of nine on others. Okay, fill in the blank. Taylor Swift is? A girl. She's a girl. Okay. <laughs> uh, at what age do you want to retire? Uh, 37. Okay, not too many years left. Uh, invisibility or super strength? Could you ask that one again? Invisibility or super strength? Oh, uh, super strength. And is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers, Trevor? Uh, sorry, it was, is it wrong to be a vegetarian? <laughs> is that, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yes, it's wrong for them to eat vegetable crackers. A animal crackers, yeah. Animal crackers, right, okay. Perfect. Whew, that's Perfect. tough. All right, well, that was well, our New York Minute. Chris, we've got four seconds left. Uh, All right. How you doing? Just open up. Uh, really great, Trevor. Okay. We'll talk about it later. Okay, right. see everybody. You guys have an amazing morning, and uh, hopefully catch you here live sometime, and hopefully everybody here can have a great morning as well. All right, give us a whoop. All right.
Good morning, y'all. How's it going? Yes, you're looking very beautiful this morning. It's lovely to have you with us. Welcome to church. Everybody online, good morning. Welcome, welcome. It's lovely to have you with us this morning. We're pumped about being back. We're looking forward to what God's going to do over this next little season here and this morning. We're looking forward to seeing what God's going to do this morning. So why don't you jump to your feet? We're going to lift up our songs of worship. We're going to bring our praise. We're going to bring our thanks. And we're going to give God all the glory that is due you, okay? So let's lift your voices this morning. Let's make them known in this place. Let's make them known in our homes. For he is worthy of all our praises. Amen.
Raise me a weapon that conquers all anxiety Let it rise Let praise arise We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything We sing with all we are and we claim your victory Let it Here we go. Sing it. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Cause fear cannot survive when we praise you. You're going to break through on our side. Forever lift him high. When all creation cry, God, we praise you. Whoa. inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. We'll sing it live. Come on. Sing. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Cause fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift you high. sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like We give you our praise Sing it! We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall Cause fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift you high With all creation cry God We praise now We'll see you break down every Giants fall, cause fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. It's beautiful to be able to get back into the building church and lift our voices to give Him our praises today, for He is good and He is worthy. Now we're going to do a new song for you. It's called Graves into Gardens. and. You know, coming out of the crazy season that we have been in, you just don't know what's going on sometimes, you know, but God is always at work. God is always up to something. He's always doing something in the background. And if you don't know that or you don't understand that, then just remember your own story. Remember where God has brought you from and brought you to. And He is faithful and He is good. He is trustworthy. So as you sing this, just remember that this morning, that God's on the move. 
He's up to something good. And we're going to see that over this next wee while. So let's continue to praise and worship the Lord this morning. I searched the world, but it couldn't fail me. Treasures that fade are never enough. And you came along and you put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied. to go. 
God so much that we have the opportunity to be in this building today. It has been so long, way too long since we've been able to see the faces of our family members, the faces of each other. And oh, it's your presence is so here, Lord, and we just can't thank you enough for just being in our, our midst today. And Lord, with all the things that are going on in our world right now, we just pray that you can just be here and we can just feel your presence in our lives and in our heart and feel your peace and know that your name conquers above all of the other things. Lord, we're so grateful for you, and we can't thank you enough. We just pray in your name. Amen. So good to see you all. So good to see you guys online as well. Uh, you know, it is such a privilege. I, like, just missing people. And uh, I don't know about you, but just to see. You walk in the door and I just want to give you a hug. And virtually I want to give you guys a hug. And, uh, and so there, there's something so healthy about just, there's a reason why the writer of Hebrews said, don't neglect gathering together. Like there's something that just, just happens when we come together. And we know biblically when two or three are gathered, God is present. We know that, but just just so nice. And I know for for some of you, um, and online for those of you that are uh, that will eventually come and, and come in person, but just take your time, no pressure. Um, there's something overwhelming about this. And uh, I remember the first time I there's people in the room, it's just it's like, oh, like I, I love this. And so it's a, it's a privilege to get together. And so I'm glad you guys are here. And if you're online, I'm just so glad that you're joining, joining with us today. And uh, you're part of the body, and we, we, we love that you're joining with us. Uh, we're in the final, uh, final sermon of our series called Subject to Change. And, uh, and what we've been trying to do is we've been trying to navigate what change and how do we handle change uh, how do we not just survive it, but how do we thrive during change? Because change is inevitable. Uh, we all know that change is inevitable. Sometimes we choose it. Sometimes we don't choose it. Um, change will happen. I read this week that the only pre- people who truly welcome change are babies with a wet diaper. <laughs> all right? Think about that. Uh, you know what? Uh, so who in the room loves change? Anybody love change? Yeah? Who hates it? Right? As most, most of the people in the room hates it, a couple of people love it. The main idea of this sermon series is, is essentially this. You're never more teachable. You're never more teachable than in the midst of change. And God uses change in our lives to shape us, to mold us. And, and right now we're going through a lot of change. And even now, like, uh, as you're navigating, we're watching Texas shutting back down again. There's a couple other states shutting it back down again. And, and we're going, like, what, what does the future look like? We have no idea. But what the cool thing is, is God uses change uh, to shape us and mold us. And, and I want us as a church, and the reason why we've, we've been navigating through this is because I would love for us as a church to come out of this better. Um, better when it comes to maybe your finances. When you look at your finances going, are there, are there things that... That, that I, need, I need to figure this thing out. Maybe, maybe I want, maybe you need to be, uh, come out of this better because of relationships or coming out of it better just navigating how you spend your time. And so that's, that's our prayer uh, because you're never more teachable than in the midst of change. Um, our son is 18 years old. And uh, well, he's almost 18. And he turns 18 next month. And one of the things that that I remember is I remember when he was born. And obviously, if you have children, you know, uh, you remember those type of things. But I remember just anticipating the change that's going to happen. Like, here I am. I've never uh, held a baby. The only baby I'd ever held was uh, my nephew. Uh, I, uh, the only diaper I've ever changed was 
Well, I, I'd never changed a diaper ever in my life. Um, I had never, like, washed a baby. And the, just the anticipation of change uh, just overwhelmed me. And my wife, she, she was ready for this, but, uh, and we didn't know what we were going to have. Because how many surprises do you have in life, really? So we were like, ah, surprise, let's see. So we were just like, we, we, I, I, complete honesty, I was completely overwhelmed. And I'm so thankful for the lady that lived about a block away. A block away, she, uh, she went to our church, and, and she was a friend of ours, and, and she loved Jesus. Uh, she had four beautiful children, and, uh, and she came to us, and she said, you know what, like, just here's some, if you ever want advice, if you ever want help during this, I'd love to help. And so what I told her, is that I said, like, I got this. Don't, don't worry about it, right? <laughs> no, of course not. I, she offered it, and she was, I think she was like, God, I, she was a godsend. And any time that she came into our house, any time that we had need, any time that Karen was struggling with something, we would able, be able to phone her or she would come over. And it was like the hallelujah chorus would start when she, when she walked in the door. Because she had this incredible wisdom. And what we needed at that time, we needed someone. We had great family, we had great friends, and we had great support, grandma and grandpa around, but we just needed that wisdom. And when it comes to change in our lives, what I would want to talk, talk about tonight, today is that this is a simple, very simple concept, but I think it's so vitally important for us to understand is that when we are in a place of change, there's times where we need to make decisions. And when we make decisions, I, I, I don't know about you, but but it's intimidating, it's overwhelming. But God, he weaves this principle throughout scripture. And this principle is this, is that we need to understand that there's wisdom around us. And God's given us wisdom and we need to listen to the people around us that have wisdom. And that's such a simple concept and we know that. Like You're like, Brad, okay, I came here for the first time in like 13 weeks and that's all you're going to tell me? Well... It's such an important thing for us. If we want to come out of a situation better, we need to glean the wisdom of the people around us. Because what happens is, is when, when, we're in a, we're, when we're in a situation of change, maybe you look at your financial situation, you're going like, how am I going to navigate this? Or you look at your marriage or your relationships or, or just your single, singleness or your schooling, and you're like, how am I going to navigate this? What happens is we, te- we tend to isolate ourselves. We tend to think, like, I'm going to just take care of this myself. I, I, I got this. But the truth is, what happens is when we isolate ourselves and we, we don't bring in people in that conversation, we're not seeing things from a different perspective. And so what did, what I, as we close off this series, I want to look at this very simple but very important habit that you and I need to create in our lives when it comes to the change that happens. What we need to do is we need to bring in the wisdom the wisdom around us and pay attention to the wisdom. So if you have your Bibles, I'd love for you to turn to an Old Testament story that you probably don't really know much about. It's in 1 Kings. Uh, you can go to your table of contents and you can find 1 Kings. Um, it's right before 2 Kings. Just, <laughs> just want to let you know that. And, uh, and so what, what I would love for you to know is uh, we're going to look at this really this story that just illustrates this simple concept. And so what my heart's desire is, is that when we go through the story, um, even if you've never heard this story, you know the end of the story. And what's interesting about this is, even if you've never heard this story, I can guarantee you, you know the end of the story. And so as we, as we navigate our, the changes in our lives, we don't want the end of the story to be like our story. We want our story to be different. And so this is a story of a king, a king that, uh, that his name is Rehoboam. But before we do, I'd love to pray, if you don't mind. And let me pray, and then let's dive in, okay? Father, right now, I just want to just stop and pause and just ask for your wisdom, ask for your spirit just to speak through me. Lord, it is overwhelming to be in, in your house um, for the first time for many of us. And Lord, we've just sung your praises. We've just, we've just worshipped you with our words. And so, Lord, I just pray, God, that you'll speak to us um, with your word. And God, may, may you give us all listening ears to hear and soft hearts to apply anything you have for us. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. 
Let me give you a little bit of a context of what's going on. You, you've heard of uh, the kings of Israel. Uh, the first king, uh, the ruler was Saul, and he, he, was, uh, <clears throat> he ruled for 40 years. And then you've obviously heard of King David. He ruled for 40 years. And then his son, King Solomon, he was the wisest man that ever lived. And it was assumed that the guy that would take over for King Solomon was his son, Rehoboam, that he would take over Israel. And so just understand that. It was assumed that he would take over Israel. But there's another character that you need to know about. Jeroboam. There's Rehoboam and then there's Jeroboam. First Kings chapter 11 verse 28. Let me introduce to you Jeroboam and there's a reason why I'm bringing this up. Verse 28 says this. Now Jeroboam was a man of standing. And when Solomon saw how well the young man did his work, he put him in charge of the whole labor force of the tribes of Israel. So, tribes of Joseph. So, this was a big deal. Jeroboam, Solomon saw how good of a worker he was, and so he put him in charge of all of the staff. The staff would have been well over 150,000 men. What was happening at this time is Solomon was building palaces and structures. It was a giant deal. And so Solomon was building all of these structures, and he saw Jeroboam, and Jeroboam was the boss. And so it was a really big deal for Jeroboam. Well, after this, one day, he was living, leaving the city of Jerusalem, and something really weird happened. Uh, really weird. Look at verse 29. About that time... Jeroboam was going out of Jerusalem, and Ahijah, the prophet of Shiloh, met him on the way. Now, as you're, as, if you're leaving, if you're leaving the uh, city and a prophet comes to you, you pay attention to him. And so as this prophet was coming up to him, he came up to him, and he was wearing a cloak, and he took his cloak off, and he started to rip his cloak apart, which Jeroboam was probably thinking, like, what? That's the weirdest thing. And so he's ripping it apart, and as he's ripping it apart, he rips his cloak up into 12 different pieces, and he takes 10 of these pieces, and he hands them over to Jeroboam. And then this is what he said. He said this in verse 31. I am going to tear the kingdom of God out of Solomon's hand and give you 10 tribes. So here's Jeroboam, and he is the leader of this like massive workforce and this prophet comes up to him and tears his robe up and gives him 10 pieces of this robe and 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 he says God is going to take the 12 tribes of Israel away from Solomon and he's going to give you 10. Now you're going like okay that what does that mean well well Israel's made up of 12 tribes right do you remember that 12 tribes and of these 12 tribes, uh, uh, God's like, hey, you know what? Solomon's not going to lead this anymore. Because Solomon at this time, uh, he actually didn't finish strong in his faith. He didn't finish strong in his faith. He actually started to follow pagan gods. And he started to marry a lot of women. He probably didn't even know their names. They probably had a number, right? And so he was marrying a lot of women. So what was happening, he was married with the, the daughters of the surrounding countries just to, to have peace. And then he would, what happened at the end of his life, he started to build these palaces. He needed all these stone cutters to build these palaces to the gods of his wives. And so as he was ending off his life, he did not follow God any longer. And God was not happy. And as a leader, he was starting to treat his staff not as friends and colleagues, but he was treating them like slaves, which didn't make God very happy. And so finally, God was fed up. And so he told Jeroboam, hey, Jeroboam, you're going to have 10 of these tribes. Well, uh, Jeroboam couldn't keep his mouth shut. He jumped on Instagram and Snapchat, and he started to let everybody know, hey, this is what God told me. I'm going to be the leader. Well... Uh, It finally got to the point where Solomon found out about him talking about this. And so we find out in verse 40, Solomon tried to kill Jeroboam. That's what you do, I guess. Uh, But Jeroboam fled to Egypt and stayed there until Solomon's death. Okay, everybody got that? Okay, so we're on board. That's Jeroboam. He leaves and he goes and hangs out in Egypt until Solomon dies. Well, 
This is where the story gets very practical. This is where the story gets very practical. Solomon dies. Uh, he dies, and it was assumed that Rehoboam would take over, that Rehoboam would take over as king, and Rehoboam, because he is his son, he would take over as king. And so in chapter 12, verse 1, this is what happened. Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had gone there to make him king. So here's Rehoboam, his, son, his dad had just died. He's pretty excited. This is his change. There's change happening in his life, and he is excited for this change. He's pumped. He is, this is positive change for him. Well, verse 2, when Jeroboam heard this, that Solomon had died and that Rehoboam was going to be crowned as king, because he was still in Egypt, the Bible said, um, he returned from Egypt. And then verse 3 says, so they sent for Jeroboam, the they, let me just pause there, the they are the representatives of Israel. The representatives of Israel that were going to uh, crown Rehoboam as king, they, obviously, they couldn't have everybody go, so they had representatives. And so the representatives, they called Jeroboam, they're like, Jeroboam, we're a great leader, Solomon's dead now, you don't have to fear for your life, come down with us. And so they called, they sent for Jeroboam, and then they all gathered together, the, the representatives, the whole assembly of Israel, they went to Rehoboam, and this is what they said to him. They're the voice of the people, right? This is what they said to him, verse 4. They said to Rehoboam, your father put a heavy yoke on us. And then they asked this question, but now lighten the harsh labor and the heavy yoke he put on us and we will serve you. So what they were saying, they were saying, hey, your, your dad, he was treating us like slaves. And so as you get into the kingdom, here's the one request that we have. We, there's change in our lives right now, and so we're just trying to change this. So just let, let, here's the one request. Can you help us? We will serve you. We will be a unified country if you just change your ways, if you put yourself and put us in front of your needs. Can you help us out with that? And so... All they are essentially saying is saying, like, stop the, stop the work in seven days a week. Stop the taxes. Stop the slavery. Like, just, just stop, and we will serve you willingly. And so Rehoboam listened to them, and he made actually two wise choices. Look at the first choice. Uh, Rehoboam answered in verse 5. He said, go away for three days and then come back to me. And so the people went away. So he needed time. Remember a couple weeks ago we were talking about reacting and responding? So instead of reacting, he responded. He's like, okay, I need three days. Go away. And so they went away. And then verse 6, the king, Rehoboam, he consulted the elders who had served his father Solomon during this lifetime. So the elders are the old guys. The elders are the ones that served with his father. The elders are the ones that had a different perspective. Right? When you're the boss, you only have one perspective. If you go talk to the employees, they have a completely different perspective, Right? And so the people came to Rehoboam saying, your dad treated us like slaves. If you helped us with taxes, if you helped us not work us so hard, we will serve you diligently. And so he's like, hey, elders, you worked with my dad. What's your advice? And so here's their advice. Verse 7. Today, if today you will be a servant to these people and serve them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your servants. And so the old guys, the old guys that worked with their, his dad said, do you want a unified team? Do you want a unified group? Serve these people. Put their interests ahead of your own. You know, you, your dad, he was pretty hard on them. So if they're asking, you need to listen to them. And I think that's great leadership, isn't it? It's great leadership when an old guy says, hey, you know, you need to listen to them. Like put, put their needs ahead of their own. But Rehoboam acted like maybe a lot of us act. He said, what, what do these guys know? What do they know? I'm a young leader. I, 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 as my mother would say, I have spit and vinegar. Right? Like I, I'm a, I, I got new ideas. I, I, have, I have great plans. And so he discounted their advice. Look at what, look at what happened. But Rehoboam rejected the advice the elders gave him. 
Rehoboam rejected the advice the elders gave him. This advice is what he needed to hear, but it's not what he wanted to do. Let me say that again. It's not what he needed to hear. It was what he needed to hear, but it was not what he wanted to do. But it was the only way to get where he wanted to be. If he wanted to be a great leader of all the nation, he needed to do that. But he didn't. For you and I, do you know that God's placed people in your life that have incredible wisdom? God's placed people in your life that have incredible wisdom, but what happens to us is we, we discount them for many different reasons. We discount the people in our lives for many different reasons, maybe because of their age, maybe because of their experience, Maybe because they're not like you. They, they haven't gone through the same experiences like you. Maybe they've come from a different background. And so we discount people's opinions over and over and over again. And so what did Rehoboam do? He did what we should never do. He only surrounded himself with yes men. He surrounded himself with people that only wanted to give him what he wanted to hear. So even before we go into the story, let me ask you a question. I'll ask you a question online. And this is even before we go to the end of the story. Whose advice are you currently ignoring? Think about that. In your life right now, think about the change that's, that's happening. Is there anybody in your life that you're currently ignoring their advice? You know that studies have shown in sports that the best players rarely make the best coaches. Do you know that? The best players rarely make the best coaches. Psychology Today did a, did a study on this, and they concluded that the best players typically know what they're doing, but they can't communicate how they do it. Right? So in sports, you, if, you, if you watch The Last Dance, great documentary, Michael Jordan, back in the heyday, why would, why would Michael Jordan need a coach? Because he's the greatest player in all of the world. Why would he need a coach? Why would LeBron James need a coach? Why would Connor McDavid need a coach? It's because they come from a different perspective. But what happens in our lives is if you've ever hung around like younger basketball players or younger hockey players, they want to learn from the greatest players, right? But then if this old guy walks in the room, they're like, I'm not going to talk to the old guy. And old when you're 18 is like 35, right? Right? And naturally, we just go, I'm not going to listen to them because they, didn't, they, didn't, they don't have the experience. And we do that all the time because we, don't, we discount people's advice because they don't have the same experience as us. And so Rehoboam, what he did, he did this, verse 8, chapter 12. He consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him. So catch that. He, he ignored the old guy's advice. He's like, hey, guys, hey, my friends who have the exact same life experience as me, my friends who actually work for me, I'm going to seek their advice. Do you think that's good advice? Not at all. Not at all. And here's the challenge. Here, and this is what I wish I would tell all high school students, all 20-year-olds, all 30-year-olds. This is like such an old person statement. I, the young people. This is what I wish everyone would know The problem with always doing what you want to do is eventually you arrive at a place where you don't want to be. If I were to grab people by the shoulders, I can't do that, so I'd do a social distance style. Virtually, grab people by the shoulders, I would say the problem with doing what you've always want always wants want to do is that you always end up to the place where you don't want to be. Think about that. Think about food. I love fuzzy peaches. Like, fuzzy peaches and Nutella, if I would dip fuzzy peaches in Nutella, that is the greatest meal known to mankind. If I eat fuzzy peaches and Nutella for a month for every meal, how do you think I'd feel? Gross, disgusting. I would gain my COVID-19 plus whatever. But that's not where I want to be. It's because... If you always do what you always want to do, you're not going to end up to the place where you want to be. And that's, I could stop talking right now if you could just learn that. There's a reason why God says, get into my word every day. And the truth is, there's times where I don't want to get into my word. 
There's times where I'd much rather watch Netflix. There's times where I'd much rather sleep in. There's times where I'd much rather do something else. And yet I know that the man I want to be is, comes from me opening God's word and going, okay, God, I need you to teach me. That's why exercise, we, some of you love exercise. A lot of us hate exercise, but we need it. You know, your natural tendencies aren't always good. That's why God's always talking about lean on the Holy Spirit. He'll give you strength to do things that aren't natural. Because the problem with always doing what you want to do is eventually arrive where you don't want to be. And that's what happened with Rehoboam. Okay, even if you don't know the end of the story, you know that the story is not going to end up well. Why? Because he's listening to the people that answer to him. And he's not listening to different perspectives. Let's wrap it up. This is what happens. So the, his, his young people, the guys that he works with, this is what they say. They say, now tell them, my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. And I don't have time to explain to you what that means. But what that means is, essentially, show them who's boss. That was an older way of saying, show them who's boss. And so, uh, verse 11, my father, uh, my father laid on you a heavy yoke. I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. Not like the scorpion, like the... But a whip was not very nice, obviously, but a scorpion was meant for criminals. So their advice was, hey, go back to the Israelite nation and tell them, hey, I'll show you who's boss. I'm not just going to treat you as slaves. I'm actually going to treat you as criminals. And so um, we know that he... After three days, he gathered the people back together, and the king, verse 13 says, the king answered the people harshly, rejecting the advice given to him by the elders. He followed the advice of the young men. And at that point, at that point, that one decision changed the trajectory of the whole country. Do you think your decisions don't affect other people? Your decisions of not bringing people in and listening to the wisdom around you, your decisions will affect other people. COVID right now. You're like, I'm not wearing a mask. That, co that Costco makes me wear a mask. I'm not going to wear a mask. Do you know why they ask you to wear a mask? It's actually not for yourself. It's actually for other people, right? And yet we live in this culture of like, it's, all, it's only about me. No, it's actually about other people. We need to listen to other people and care for other people. As Christians, we need to follow Jesus' leading and sit with other people and, and care for one another. And yet, the decisions we make when it comes to change, we need to listen to the wisdom around us because that makes, the decisions we make affect not just you, it affects the people around you. And Rehoboam, it affects this whole country for generations, all because he neglected to listen to the people around him. And so... What happened was, um, unbeknownst, uh, Jeroboam probably gathered with his people and said, hey, guys, he's not going to listen. God already told me about the 10 pieces of cloth. He's not going to listen. And so when they came back, they were expecting a response from King Rehoboam, and they came with a, with a statement. And it's a weird statement. This is what it said. Verse 16, what, sh what share do we have in David? What part in Jesse's sons? To your tents, Israel. Look after your own house, David. But essentially... Again, we don't have time to go into it, but this was a well-known statement that was used back in King David's time by his enemies. And this is a well-known statement. It essentially is, is saying this, go away. We're not going to follow you. Go back to your own place. Go build your own palaces. Go rule yourself. And so Rehoboam, he didn't really clue in. And so we find out in verse 18 that Rehoboam sent out Adoram, who was in charge of forced labor. But look at what all Israel did. They stoned him to death. They showed him, we're not going to follow. We already said we're not going to follow you. We're not working for you. And finally, verse 19, so Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. All because this guy would not listen to the wisdom around him. And when the kingdom would never come back together, and when a kingdom is divided, it's weakened, and when it's weakened, it becomes vulnerable. And when it becomes vulnerable, it becomes invadable. Just like our lives. 
when there's change that happens in our lives, if we don't listen to the wisdom around us, we become weak, vulnerable, and invadable. We become ineffective, and we make the wrong choices. And so, what we, let, here's my challenge as I wrap up. I really challenge you to, as you make decisions, as you try to navigate, what am I going to do with my finances? As I, as I, as I, re as I reflect, as I reflect on what's happening in my life financially, ask people, ask, ask people this question. What would you do if, I, if, if you were in my shoes? Simple question. What would you do if you were in my shoes? This person might have never been in business. This person might, may never have had kids. This person may never have had final, financial struggles. But it's a great question to bring people in and go, like, what would you do if you were in my shoes? But here's the thing. A lot of time we don't ask that question. Why? Because we usually already know the answer. If you already know the answer, you should probably already do it. We don't ask that question because a lot of the time in our lives is we don't, want people to, we don't want people to know about our business. But the truth is, private decisions have public consequences. Our private decisions have consequences. And so biblically, what my encouragement is for us as a church is, is we're just navigating changes. I really encourage you to bring people in. And ask them, what would you do in my situation? And just navigate different perspectives. Why? Because God has given you a community that, that loves you and cares for you. And you don't have to do this by yourself. There's a reason why God constantly says, hey, you're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. Do not fear. It's because, it's because he doesn't want you to know, do things by yourself. He wants you to have the strength to go, okay, how do I navigate this? And so as a church, as we, as we come out of this COVID situation, hopefully sooner than later, we want to become better for it. And how do we become better for it? By listening and creating the habit of listening to the people around us, bringing them in, saying, what would you do if you were in my shoes? I hope that's practical. That's super practical and super simple, but it will affect your life in a tremendous way. Uh, the band's going to come up. We're going to have one more song. I think we had time for that. And, uh, and let me just pray, and then we'll, uh, we'll conclude, all right? Let me pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for just who you are, and thank you for simple, practical advice. Lord, that story is in the Bible for a reason, because, God, you, you, we're all leaders of our, of our lives, and we're all guiding certain situations. And, God, you want us to seek wisdom from people that are different from us, people from a different perspective. And Lord, even as kids or even as adults, we just need to bring people into those changes so that we can make wise decisions. So Lord, we just pray as a church that we'll come out of this better, all because we're asking, God, what are you doing in our lives and how can I respond? We love you so very much. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand, church. I'm not 
Well, thank you so much for coming out today and for tuning in online. Just want to remind you that uh, you do need to continue to RSVP uh, for every Sunday, and that closes off by Thursday. So we're not, I guess, allowing like late last-minute check-ins at the moment. We have to be able to prepare and plan for that. So check in online and RSVP, and uh, you can continue to give. Uh, there's a few different ways to do that uh, via text going online or continuing to do that in person and we're just so incredibly thankful for everybody and your support do you guys have a good day was it awesome just being here oh yeah so good so you guys have an amazing day have a wonderful canada day stay safe but have fun while staying safe and uh, we'll catch you guys next week thanks